Hello, and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Some of you have been asking about what I use for antennas in my radio videos, so I thought I'd go through and show the antennas that I use for my ham radio and shortwave listening. So first off, I'm gonna show you guys the HF dipole that I use. Now, my radio shack is down there, below that section of my house that sticks out, that's below my living room, and the coax runs just slightly under the ground across the yard and then up here, up this tree. And you can see the center insulator of the dipole is right there. I'll zoom in on that so you guys can see what it looks like. So the center insulator, you can see it's a homemade piece of PVC trim board and I've got a couple of copper strips there and some bolts going through. And you can see my coax is mounted to one of the sets of bolts and then I've got two legs of the fan dipole mounted to the others. Now, of course the way the dipole is configured is that I've got two legs going out on each side. One leg is cut in length for 80 meters, it's about 60 feet or so, and the other leg is cut for 40 meters, I think that's around 30 feet thereabouts. And they go off in the trees over there in one direction, and in the other direction they go this way. The orientation of this antenna is such that the broad side of the wires is roughly east-west. That's looking east and directly behind me is west. Over there, of course, is north and that's south. Now I do transmit with this antenna and some of you will notice the conspicuous absence of a ballon. Now I did have a ballon on this antenna at one point, but the ballon filled up with water and failed. So since I really don't transmit a whole lot and I mostly receive, I just put the antenna together that way and it seems to work okay. Now it will tune up and transmit just fine. I've made contacts into Europe and west coast of the United States with no issues. The only problem I get is because there's no ballon on this, I do get some RF on the feed line back into the shack. So one of these days I am planning to put a one-to-one -one ballon back up at that feed point to eliminate that RF on the feed line for those rare occasions when I do transmit. Okay, so now we're taking a look at one of the legs of my fan dipole, and they're all configured more or less the same way. You may be able to see up there, there is an eye hook in the tree, and I've got Dacron rope just going around that eye hook and straight down the trunk of the tree, all the way down here to the bottom, where I've got it tied off and I've got a little bit of slack here. And what that allows me to do is if I want to work on the antenna, I can just untie it from this bottom hook and I can gently lower it down through the eye hook. The eye hook works sort of like a pulley and I can lower the legs of the antenna down without taking the whole thing down. The other thing that this does is allows the antenna to flex a little bit when these tra trees sway in the wind. So far, this antenna's been up for about two and a half years and I haven't had any issues with the wires or the ropes breaking. And there's a look at one of the other legs so that you guys can see. I've got plastic insulators between the wire side, which is on the right, and the rope side, which is on the left. Now even though those are just plastic insulators and the sun has been beating down on them for two and a half years, they seem to be doing okay with no issues. The next antenna that I have is also up here on the hill next to my house. And some of you have seen this in a previous video that I made where I repaired this homemade tilt over mast. But this is a Mako V58 uh, CB antenna. And I pretty much use this primarily on 10 meters. Uh, but I do use it on 20 meters sometimes. It tunes up just fine and works a little better than the horizontal antenna sometimes on 20. And you can see I've got it mounted to a homemade tilt-over mast. And the mast is just made out of electrical conduit and chain link fence top rail. It's not the strongest thing in the world, but it was pretty cheap to make. All the materials required to build this tilt-over antenna tower were under $50. As I mentioned, I had to repair it once since it's been up here, and that was because one of the top rail sections bent over, but those are about $10 at Home Depot, so I can replace those every so often, and it's not a big deal. Now, the way this works is you can see that I've got two pieces of conduit on either side of the center top rail section that goes up, and I've got three bolts, one at the top, one in the middle here, and one at the bottom. 
And what I can do to tilt this over is just loosen and remove two of the bolts and then leave the one at the bottom or in the middle if I want to tilt it that way for that matter. And the whole thing will just tilt over and I can work on the antenna. If you want to watch the video that I made that shows how this works, I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. Okay, the next two antennas that I have are mounted over there on my house. So the next antenna that I'll show is my 6 meter 5 element Yagi. Now I picked that thing up for almost next to nothing at a ham fest. It needed a little bit of work before I put it up. I had to replace one of the elements. And you may be able to see there that it's kind of bowed in the middle. The previous owner had it on a tower and the tower fell over so that antenna took some damage, but I was able to repair it and put it up there. Now again, it's really not the most sturdy mount for that type of antenna. It's a little bit bigger of an antenna than I really need, but the price was right. Now you can also see that I've got that on a kind of a Channel Master style TV antenna rotor, and I really thought that that would kind of not last more than a year or so, but it's been up there two and a half years now with no issue and the rotator still turns and shows no sign of wearing out or anything like that. I made a couple of videos detailing that antenna and that rotor installation and I'll link those down in the description below in case you care to watch them. The next antenna that I have is a two meter vertical antenna and it's mounted on a 10 foot piece of mast on the side of the garage there. That is a Bozak antenna. So my two meter work usually consists of some simplex with some guys around town and a little bit of repeater work, but not a whole lot. I do use two meter repeaters, but primarily when I'm mobile. I don't generally use them in the shack, but I do listen in quite a bit and that antenna seems to work well for that. So next up, we're taking a look up in the rafters of my garage. And the antenna that we're looking at here is an old style Larson, I think it's a dual bander. If not, it's just a single two meter antenna. You can see it's a mag mount and it's stuck to an old tin sign. And I use that for my scanner antenna that I have out here in the garage. And it seems to work well. I'm not trying to pull in any uh, real long distance stations on that. Just use it to monitor just local stuff and it does okay for that. Next up here in the rafters, you can see I've got a Fire Stick CB antenna. Now this one I had out here, I was fooling around with a CB out here at one point, and then I took that away and tried a 10 meter antenna, or a 10 meter radio out here in the garage, and then was using it just for general shortwave and testing purposes and stuff. Right now, I don't think I even have the coax going down through the access hole. I think it's just coiled up here and the thing is just sitting here. But it is here if I need it for something or I can change the antenna and put something else on this base that's here. Last up here, hopefully you guys can see it, I have a two meter J-pole antenna. This is something that I built myself out of some copper pipe and some clamps I had laying around. And I use this for the two meter radio that's in my garage. Now the radio I use in my garage I use almost exclusively for just monitoring the local repeaters, but every now and then I will talk on this antenna through one of the local repeaters, one of the closer ones, and maybe do a little simplex work with a guy that lives here in town. But again, this is mostly just for monitoring and I don't use it too much for transmitting. Although it is tuned up and I've put my antenna analyzer on it and it works just fine for transmitting, no problems. In fact, there was one time when I was monitoring uh, 14652 simplex and I heard a guy calling so I went back to him and he was a good 30 or 40 miles west of here. So this antenna does work fine for transmit and receive. So those are the antennas that I use here in the radio room and out in the garage for listening to various radios. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which you'll find in the description below. Thanks for watching.